So if it sort of says maybe 150 hours, yet you're seeing that all this is, all the paint is scratched and you know, the tracks are completely worn out and chewed up, something's not adding up. Right, so this video is exactly what the title says, what to look for when you're buying a used excavator. Um, now, a lot of my regular viewers will, they'll know this, they'll know what they're looking for. So for the rest of you, just, you know, have a cup of tea or coffee, maybe a cold snack, sit back and just enjoy. Um, but for those of you that uh, maybe are looking to purchase your first uh, digger, um, or if you're just interested, well, this video is for you. So first off, let's just have a look at the machine. Now, this machine itself here, this one here is obviously a Kubota. It's about a five and a half tonner, but everything we're gonna be looking at will apply whether it's a little 0.8 ton, really up to an 80 ton or above. You know, the, the principles are all the same. But this one we've got here is, as I said, a Kubota, five and a half tonner, it's a nice size. You know, they're, they're a lot easier to transport than maybe a 13 tonner or something like that, obviously, um, but they're big enough to do a real good day's work. So, General appearance, you know, we're here today at Ritchie Brothers. Obviously, I've just nicked this off the auction line, just dragged it in here. And, you know, as I said, as a nice example. So if I'd seen this machine and I'm interested in buying it, as we said, to look around, obviously all the glasses in the cab, things like that, because it tends to give a bit more of a, an overall impression of how the machine has been looked after, how it's been treated. You know, um, now it could be, an owner operator, it could be X hire. And people think, yeah, well, X hire machines, they're, they're a definite no no because everyone's got on them, nobody cares about them. Yeah, there's that. But most of those machines that you see that have been abused, you can tell that. Other machines in a hire fleet have been well maintained because they know the customer may not look after them. So the engineers, when they come back in, uh, the fitters, they'll actually make sure that everything's okay before they go back out again. So they've actually been well looked after. So never discount a hire machine. As I said, this is the whole point. Doesn't matter who's had it, you could have an owner driver that's a real uh, a bit, a bit aggressive with his machinery, and you have those that really look after them. So this is what we're looking at here. As I said, it, it doesn't matter where it's come from, it's about the machine itself. That's how you judge a machine. So this one here, what we're looking at. Um, all right, there's a lot of grease on it, and that's a good thing um, because somebody's taken the time to make sure that it's been you know, well looked after and maintained. So you can see in here, I mean, on a smaller machine like this, you can actually move it. All right, there's a bit of play there. There's a bit of play in there from you, otherwise it would just bind up. So don't be put off by like that. But if there's real excessive slop, if you were doing this and the whole thing was you know, bang, bang, bang. It's a piece of junk. And there's a lot of play. Again, not the end of the world, but when you're thinking of what you're gonna be willing to pay for that machine, think, I might need a set of pins and bushes in this. So there's a, there's a cost there. Um, but on, on this machine itself, I don't actually see anything here that's excessive. For the age of the machine and the hours, that's perfectly in line. And that's another thing, hours and age. Make sure that the hours that are on the clock tally with what you're seeing. So if it sort of says maybe 150 hours, yet you're seeing that all this is, all the paint is scratched and you know, the tracks are completely worn out and chewed up, something's not adding up. But with a few thousand hours on, the tracks are gonna be worn. There's gonna be a bit of play in the pins and bushes. Um, so that tallies in, it's telling the truth. So again, looking at general appearance, welds, especially around pins and bushes. You're looking for uh, what we call bleed, which is um, trickles of brown rust. And that shows that there's uh, rust has formed because it hasn't been greased or oiled or lubricated. And maybe a pin has started to just catch up in the bush and it might then get to the point where it seizes. Well, the power of a hydraulic ram is phenomenal. And if that can't move freely, 
The next thing it will give is often the weld. And they can, I've seen these where they're actually torn completely out. So always just make sure of things like that where the welds are tops, bottoms, and stuff like that. Now, with a machine like this, where you've got the offset and you've got the king post, which goes through there, that way, does the machine only, not only slews that way, so does the arm. So you can work across yourself if you're working tight to a trench. Now, having a bit of play in the king post isn't an issue. Um, you're going to get that. It's just, this is where most of the actual power and wear uh, seems to be with machines like this. So as I said, don't be put off by it. If when you're looking at the machine and you move everything, the whole thing, the arm's <laughs> gonna come off, then yeah, that, that's obviously a bad sign. But a bit of wear here, that's nothing to worry about. All right, moving around again. So we've got the cab, as I said. This one, all the glasses in place, um, panels and stuff. Now, you get damage on a machine. That's to be expected. Um, depends where they're working. They might be working close to trees and sometimes you can't help it, you'll get scratches. But again, if you're not that bothered, don't worry about it, it's only literally cosmetic. Then you've got a machine like this one where the panels are straight, but the paint started to fade. Well, an hour or two with a bit of cutting compound and you'd imagine that that will come back up and look quite nice. Wax on, wax off. So again, you can make a machine that's average look really nice if you spend a bit of time on it. Well, Would you look at that? Right, then you want to start looking in under places like this. So with these um, almost zero swing type machines, and now everyone's cup of tea. A lot of people still like the traditional one with a counterweight over the back. But again, working in confined spaces, these machines are becoming the norm. But anyway, everything's jammed in there, we know. Um, so that's really where you want either a good uh, torch, you know, a flashlight on your iPhone or an actual inspection lamp. Have a look, see if anything's visibly leaking or has rubbed and chafed. Again, it's not the end of the world if you see like, a pipe is leaking or whatever, but it's a cost that you're gonna incur once you buy the machine, so bear that in mind. But looking at this, everything seems to be good and in order, everything's dry, and I've literally brought this machine in here, you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing as I'm doing it. So we may find, you know, something, but at this point, we haven't. Um, yeah, she's all right, actually. Right, round to the business end. There's the engine. Now, what you'll be looking out for here are things such as filters. Some filters have often got the date of when they were changed, um, actually written in, the, in like a Sharpie. This one hasn't, but it's been done fairly recently, I'd imagine. Um, then you've got your visual part, your actual uh, element here, your fuel trap, uh, where you, all your dirt and debris will collect. That actually looks very good and clean again. So all these things are starting to point towards this machine having been looked after uh, by the previous owner, be that a, a large fleet rental firm or a private individual. No visible leaks around the engine. Everything's clean in here. It's intact. Again, just looking for those telltale signs. Nope, all good. All right, so we've had the visual walk around. And to be honest, that's the first point of call really is, is this machine even worth me considering putting a bid in on or you know, speaking to the owner and trying to have a deal? From what I can see here, uh, yeah, I think we'll look a little bit further. So. Right, inside the cab, everything looks, again, in place. It's not all torn or there's mud everywhere and, and everything's scuffed up. Seat is in good order. Um, so again, these are the telltale signs. So what hours has this actually got? I don't know. Let's have a little look. Let's just turn that on. Three thousand two hundred and six hours. Now, 
a machine that's done that, would I expect to see this? Yeah, I mean, seat is good. Uh, I don't know, maybe five, six thousand hours, I'd expect to see the, the upholstery starting to maybe tear or fluff up. I'd expect to feel in the levers, just without actually putting pressure on, but just that they would start to rattle, they'd start to wear. But at 3,000 hours, no, I'd expect the levers still to be good, which they feel. Same on here. No play there, that's good. Yeah, so again, this is telling me, this gives me the confidence that the hours are correct. So, we've now, I think, convinced ourselves that this machine is actually worth looking into further, possibly worth uh, putting in uh, an honest bid on what we you know would suit us for our application um, but then you've got things now such as running gear so well, this one is fitted with rubber tracks which again are very popular because you know you can bring them inside uh, you can use them on paved areas without too much damage now these obviously are not new um, could they be the originals 3,000 hours possibly or they could have been replaced the point is it's neither here nor there because they've still got a lot of life left in them so we're not going to be having to put out and shell out for a set of tracks on this machine now the actual running gear front idlers very very good still top rollers are all right they're not worn excessively same as the bottoms and the drive sprockets on the rear well they are, you know, of the age. They're probably 50% still. So we're not going to have to shell out for that. Obviously, just because that side is okay doesn't necessarily mean this side. So always check. Don't just check one side. I've seen people do, oh, the tracks are great on that side. Yeah, they've just been replaced because the other ones were absolutely worn out. So they replaced those. These ones have still got a bit of life in them. And you think, that's all right. They're brand new, both sides. They're not. These are the same as the other side. It says they're about 50%. So we could run these a little bit longer yet. So there's another cost that we're not going to incur straight away after possibly buying this machine. Look along the bottom of the blade. Are the edges curled up towards the ends? Is the blade cut in or damaged? Again, these are just telltale signs about how the machine has been used or abused, and um, whether you've got to put another cutting edge on. Well, although it looks all right, how close is this cutting edge to the actual bottom of the blade here? And we've got about 20 mil. So again, we can get by without putting a cutting edge on quite yet. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be looking at is wear and tear on the machine itself now obviously we're not going to do that in here we can do that outside but what we'll be looking at are things such as the slew ring which is obviously under here that's obviously where the whole machine turns round on and despite uh, what some people will tell you you can go around as many times as you like one way or the other it won't suddenly unscrew itself and fall off or will it but when you're checking the slew ring, what you want to be doing is getting the machine on some level ground, getting a set so that the blade is just touching, and then with the pressure of the arm, just apply a bit of downward pressure on the arm until you can start to feel the machine lift at the front, and then let her down. Then lift the arm slightly off the ground and put her down. Now what you're looking for there is that there is no play between that point of when the machine is being lifted up that the actual machine does come up without the track still staying on the ground and this top part moving back and tilting back. So this is exactly the same with when you've lifted the arm. You're making sure that the, once the machine is going down and you're, the arm's coming off the ground, that the top part doesn't continue coming forward. If it does, 
then you're going to have a lot of play in the, in the actual slew ring. So the other thing we'll check with the slew is the actual uh, slew itself. So that what you do, make sure everybody else is away around you and then simply maybe slew hard left and let go of the lever. And it should slow down fairly quickly. It shouldn't just continue slowly going to the left. Same with the right hand side, just to make sure that everything there is working. If you've checked all that and everything seems okay, then the chances of you are you're not into a big expense. Now, obviously the main thing with any excavator, uh, the heart of the machine are the pumps. So you can check that the pumps work, you know, check every function on those levers, make sure that the arm goes up fully, make sure it comes down, make sure it comes in, crowds, all those functions. And when you're doing it, come just to the point where it should stop and then give that a little bit more. And you should hear the relief valve just blow and you'll, you'll hear the machine pull down or you'll say, you'll actually hear a, a, like, almost like a squeak as the relief valve blows. Check all those functions. Once you're checking all these functions and everything works, also make sure the points are where the hydraulic rams are, that there's no actual play. So when you go to lift the arm up, so what we're gonna be seeing here, if you were gonna lift this arm up uh, and the, the main boom, this ram is gonna extend. So just as you're doing that, you, what you don't want to see is this extending and nothing happening here for you know, 25 mil to an, in, you know, an inch um, before anything happens. And the same when bringing it back in, because that obviously means there's play in there. So what you want to see is as soon as you move the lever and that ram starts to move, that the function you're wanting to operate moves at that point. Okay, with lights and mirrors and that, within the course of their life, they often get knocked and whatever. So if a light isn't working or whatever, or a mirror is broken or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Just sort of tally that in for when you're making your offer. Waste of our time! Because you've got to replace the light or you're gonna, you know, these are all little things you're gonna think of, but that's, that's not a reason not to buy a machine. Okay, buckets. Now, this machine is fitted with uh, about a 12 inch bucket, really. Um, and that's all right, that's great. But really, you want, um, you want a, a variety of buckets. You want a, one for grading uh, or ditching. You'll want a bulk digging bucket, possibly. Um, and most times, when you're buying out of an auction, a machine only comes with one bucket. Uh, like I said, so you can look There'll be other auction lots where you can buy the buckets you want or you can buy them privately, you know, elsewhere. But don't let that put you off. Don't think, well, this isn't the machine for me because I want a bigger bucket. If the machine's right, the, the buckets compared to your purchase of the machine are, are peanuts. Now, the thing is, like with this machine, little added bonuses is pipe for a breaker. So you can fit a hydraulic concrete breaker on this because the services are there. <laughs> Or you could fit maybe a flail trimmer uh, or a weed basket, you know, a cutting, reciprocating weed basket for cleaning out uh, ditches and, and waterways. But this machine, which is nice at this sort of size, is fitted with a hydraulic quick hitch. So that means that you don't have to keep getting out with a bar and a hammer and beating the pins out to change your buckets. You can do it all from in the cab. So little things like that are, are a real bonus. Okay, so there we go. That's just, as I said, a brief overview. And each digger will be completely different. You're gonna get the same machine, same age, with better paintwork, or maybe better spec air conditioning or something like that. You're gonna get an older machine with better tracks. The point is, buyer beware. I've just given you, as I said, just a taste of the things, the basic things to look for. And if you're not sure, then find somebody that uh, does know the machine get them to go along with you. There's no ha you know, harm in asking somebody. So as I said, just take this as an overview of what to look for when buying a used excavator. So there you go. That just gives you, as I said, an insight into buying a used excavator. As an example, we've got this one here. There's play obviously in the pins and bushes, but we'll be addressing this uh, in an upcoming video soon. So there we go, yeah, I know. Um, there's plenty more coming up and don't forget you can keep up to date with what we're up to 
on Instagram, which is Lord Muck4890. And as I said, we'll be getting on with this machine. Yeah, I'm now telling them. I am telling them. We'll be doing this one, doing pins and bushes and a load of other stuff as well. So, anyway, until the next one. Be well.